Thank you, Sam. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with our State Department that allegedly represents our interest and is looking to represent the interest of the 3,000 plus men and women at the time at Ashraf. They beseeched, encouraged, convinced us to intervene on the behalf of the State Department, our State Department, to convince these men and women to live, leave the city they basically built. And I must tell you, it is rather remarkable. The diaspora of uh, Iranians around the world had contributed hundreds of millions of dollars. They had a cultural center. They had workshops. They had schools. They built a city. There were all kinds of creature comforts. Convince them to leave that facility to Camp Liberty, which had been an American base, ironically named at the present time. Remember, it's our State Department, and we did. And by the way, they were shown by the United Nations photographs of Camp Liberty as it existed when the United States Army had occupied it. The amenities were plentiful, the sewage system was operational, they had electricity, they had 17,000 key walls or whatever that number may be. It was safe, it was secure, it was humane, it was a step down from the city that these industrious, enterprising, able, well-educated, sophisticated people had met, but they moved. We convinced them to move. When they got there, they realized that the photos were not a distortion, it was an abject, bold-faced lie. They had gutted the place. No sewage, no water and sewer, no electricity, no security areas, and they had reduced the size of the camp, almost a postage stamp, like trapped, I take it personal. Because our credibility and that credibility was on the line. And because of that, Madam Raja V and the men and women and the leadership moved everybody but 100. And here was the promises they made. One, we'll make sure that the 100 people left at Ashraf can stay there because they have several hundred million dollars worth of property left there. And we're going to convince the Iraqi government to let them sell it because then they can use those dollars for resettlement purposes. Promise number one, broken. Promise number two, we'll do everything we can to facilitate the upgrade of facilities. Clearly have not done it. They have had months to do it, months to do it, have failed to do it. Third promise, we will have an American presence there on a regular basis to ensure, from the State Department, by the way, to ensure their safety and security at all times because we know, we know they're not secure there. Not only because the accommodations are god-awful, there's no security there, but because of the they would never say it, but the mistrust, and they shouldn't be mistrustful of the Maliki government, pure and simple. So we take this personal. And we take it even more personal. Iraqi troops entered Ashraf and assassinated 52 of these men and women, many of them with their hands tied behind their back, a couple of them on the hospital gurneys as they were going to get medical treatment for the injuries and wounds sustained during the attack. Oh, and by the way, seven hostages taken, and all of a sudden nobody knows anything about where these men and women are, and six of the seven are women. Remember, it's our government promised to keep them safe at Ashraf. Our government promised them they'd be safe and secure if they moved from Ashraf to Liberty, and our government asked some of its citizens to convince these good people to empty words tragically flawed and broken promises and no credibility left with my government and with my State Department. I take it personal. 